Um, so, welcome. Uh, this is the Columbia Library's Data Club, um, and we, over the last several years, have strung together a series of workshops on, I would say, 90% Python-related subjects, maybe another 15% um, devoted to Julia and other libraries. Um, and. Our goal in this time is to talk about, in this case, X-Ray, which is this multi-dimensional um, library that in the geoscience community, in the earth science community, is, has like blown up um, because uh, geoscientists and many scientists of many spheres, at, um, astrophysicists, use multi-dimensional data. So, um, but the goal is for you to learn things, um, so I can lecture, but we're going to be going through a notebook, and um, uh, I will, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I'm paying attention to whether or not y'all are nodding or uh, frowning, and, and the goal is to go at your speed, because this is about you. Um, so, um, today we're going to be talking about uh, X-ray. And uh, I should say, uh, credit where credit is due, 
this um, talk is drawing very heavily from the Project Pythia um, group, as well as a few other sources. So um, I've tweaked things, but, um, but there's some really good um, work out there that, that I'm drawing off of. Um, so, OK. So we're going to start from the ground up in X-Ray. And that means talking about the data structures that X-Ray uses um, in order to produce, uh, to work with gridded labeled data. So, that, so like, ideally, when you're interacting with a library, the first question that the library answers is, like, what's the problem? Um, <laughs> We don't just make libraries for no reason. And the problem that X-Ray was developed to solve is that X-Ray is that I've definitely had this, this issue working in, in MATLAB. You have a four-dimensional array, and you have to like, manually keep track of which dimension is associated which, with which, uh, like, <laughs> is dimension one um, time or uh, X or Y, and if you get it wrong, then you're sunk, and things get hairy pretty quickly. So, so uh, our goal here is to get some familiarity with library um, built by people who had that same problem. Um, OK, so let's start by installing the things that Google Colab doesn't have um, natively. In our case, um, we are drawing um, example data sets from Pythia, um, because even though as scientists a lot of our time is spent um, dealing with data wrangling, we're not going to do any of that right now. Um, if you're familiar already with Google Colab, that's great. If you're not, basically a Google Colab is a um, cloud-based system similar to a Jupyter Notebook, but with a back end of Google's servers. So you still see on the upper right-hand corner this RAM and disk um, showing how like, that we are connected to um, Google um, servers via a Python 3 kernel. And they have a bunch of libraries installed, including X-Array, but they don't have all the ones that we need. So we're doing this exclamation point pip. Um, pip is one of the two libraries, one of the two tools that people use to install Python libraries. Um, and in addition to Pythia data sets, we're also installing this time library that allows us to deal with date time objects. Um, NC time access is a similar thing. And then Cartopy is Python's, um, one of Python's mapping libraries that we'll touch on. OK, so we ran that. Hopefully, it worked for you also. Now we're going to press play on the next to import a few libraries. If you get tired of pressing the, the little play button, you can hit um, Shift Enter to run a cell. So if you're if you're click, clicked in the cell, you can just hit Shift Enter and it runs and advances to the next cell. Okay, so we are importing date time. We're importing NumPy, which is um, like the the baseline Python um, numerical package. Pandas is a similarly kind of foundational, two-dimensional, like Excel, but in Python, then X-Ray, and these data sets that we'll work with. OK. So as I said, X-Ray is, you could think of it like pandas, but in multi-dimensions. So whereas with pandas, you, you have rows and columns. In X-Ray, it's just um, uh, generalized. And uh, so it's generalized to n dimensions, and the dimensions are labeled. So this is important because um, if we're dealing with multi-dimensional data sets, like for instance temperature, temperature will have latitude, longitude, time, um, and you want to keep track of all those. But you might also have, if you have a, if you have a satellite, you might or a sensor. Um, you might have temperature, precipitation, humidity, like all these different variables that you would want to keep in the same object, um, keep in the, in the same relationship, and do operations on, and keep in the, in the same reference frame. 
latitude and longitude might themselves, if you're in the, at the poles, they might be functions of x and y. Um, so uh, we, we're, we will have these variables, we will have coordinates, and we'll have dimensions. And we'll talk about what each of these things are and how they behave and how they're wrapped into data arrays and data sets. OK. So data structures. And I promise we're going to work with code, but uh, um, we need to do a little bit of this first. So the fundamental data structure that we're going to work with is our data arrays. So this is a multi-dimensional array um, with uh, labeled or named dimensions, and uh, you can add uh, into data arrays dimension names, coordinates, attributes. So uh, uh, actually, I don't think I define attributes. Uh, but attributes would be something like um, uh, uh, copyright Roger Creel, uh, 2021, something that has nothing to do with the data itself, but metadata that you want to attach to the data. Um, so that's the data array. Um, and data arrays, so I'll scroll up here to look back at the picture. A data array might be precipitation. Um, you could also then have a second data array, temperature, that would then be linked together within the data set, which would be like IceSat2, like a, a satellite. Um, OK. So, oh, sorry. OK, so a data set, a, a data array has four attributes. It has the values. So, NumPy, this like underlying numerical library, will hold the data, the, um, the values itself. Um, that's like the temperature measurement. Um, we have dimension names. X, Y, Z, where is the temperature in, in space, in, in dimensional space. Um, we have coordinates. So uh, how do like a, a one-dimensional array of numbers um, associated with the values? And then we have these attributes. OK. Um, and these variables that that are the the underlying um, that are underlying X array are very similar to NumPy arrays except that they have this metadata associated with them. Um, dimensions X Y time uh, X Y Z uh, were in three dimensions, but data can be in more dimensions. Um, Time would be the fourth dimension, but then you could have depth as if you're if you're dropping a probe through the ocean. I guess that would be z, x, yeah. Um, coordinates, I think, is the hardest uh, concept to wrap your head around. Um, often, a dimension and a coordinate are the same thing. But there can be cases where coordinates have more than one dimension. So the case that, that I keep coming back to is, is um, a latitudinal point can be described in Cartesian x, y, z in relation to this, the center of the Earth, for instance. Um, but you could come up with other, other examples. Um, and that, I think, as you start to work with X-ray, if this is something that you work with, is like the, the, like the biggest change of headspace is to, is to uh, understand how coordinates and, and dimensions are working with your data. OK. So let's play with code. Uh, we're going to start with a random NumPy array. So here we've said. Uh, we're going to create some random temperature data, convert it from Kelvin, um, well, put it into Kelvin, and then we're just using NumPy's random function to create some data that have uh, 
if we look at their shape, have a shape of 5, 3, 4. OK. So that's what's going to underline everything that we're doing here. The next thing that we're going to do is say we have this data, and these data are, um, oops, if we look at their type, we get it's a NumPy data array. OK, great. So the next thing we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do is to wrap the data in X-Array. OK, so now, whereas before we just had this, this array, now we've got a bit more information. It's telling us we have three dimensions, and they are five, four, th five three, and four units long. But we don't know anything about the, the data, and we have no coordinates, no indices, no attributes. Um, and that's not as helpful as it could be. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we are going to do the same thing that we did. Uh, and this is, I would say, bad coding practice. Never make temp variables, but welcome. Um, but uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to specify a keyword argument dimensions, dims. So we're going to say. This data has three dimensions, time, latitude, and longitude. Yes? What was the 543? Or are you going to come back to that? So when we first created uh, this random temperature, we just arbitrarily decided that we were going to have a three-dimensional data set that, has, that is 5 long by 3 by 4. So this is but just. those are all temperatures. Yeah. So okay. we've. We're in temperature space. We, we sampled a, a box of this room, and we have x, y, and I guess we have x, y, and we're going to call it time instead of z. Um, OK. So let's look at this. Um, so now we've given it time, lat, and long. And uh, how cool. now. Our X-Array data array is labeled time, lat, and long. Um, and like this is better, because now if we want to, well, I'll show you what we can do with this in a second. But um, we're adding more information in to save ourselves from keeping track of it manually. OK. So. But so far, we have dimensions, but we don't have coordinates. Um, so let's add some of those in. So what we're going to do first is um, welcome. We're talking about uh, Python, and we're talking about um, a library that allows us to work with multidimensional data and label it so that we don't make mistakes and shoot ourselves in the foot. Um, OK, so we're going to create some coordinates to map onto this data. So first, we're going to use, yes? Can you do like different dimensions? For like, you know you do like 5, 3, 4, but can you do like for the second of the 5? Every dimension. Like you have like three by four. You have five of three by four. Correct. But can I do like three by four and then four by five and then three by four? Um, as long as you add, as long as they're all four by five and you just have nans. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they will fill out this thing. So it has to be a dimension definition. Definitionally, has to like the dimensions have to be orthogonal to each other and span whatever space you've defined. Um, but yes, because otherwise, a lot of the math that we're doing wouldn't work. Um, but yeah, you can mask out parts of different dimensions with nans or something else. Um, 
Yeah. OK, so we're going to add coordinates on. Uh, we've used this pandas date time uh, starting from 2018 with periods by, uh, with five periods. So now we've got five month long, or day, five days, um, one, two, three, four, five. We're also going to create latitude and longitude. So we've done that via this numpy.lin space that makes a linearly spaced vector uh, starting from, in, in our case, negative 120 and going to negative, one, one, uh, negative 60 with four steps. And the same for latitudes. Um, so what that looks like, we have three latitudes. Uh, all this is arbitrary just to look at how we can work with this. OK. So, but now we have time lat long and uh, time has uh, length 5, latitude has length 4, and 3, and long has length 4. So we can now stitch this together. We have data. We're going to say chords equals times lats longs, and dims equals time lat long. And if we look at that, now time still lat long is 5, 4, 5 3, 4. But now below, we have coordinates, time, lat, and long. And the coordinates each have a dimension associated with them. And they have a data type, a date time, or a float. And then it lists uh, what the values of that coordinate are. Um, and this turns out to be an incredibly powerful way of, of wrapping data in a way that it's useful. We also now have in indices. So uh, we have three indices, and each of them is a pandas in index, because underneath X-Array, X-Array is using pandas indices. Um, OK. So now we have this, this data array. We can also add like metadata to it. We can say uh, we want this to, to tell the user that the units of this are going to be Kelvin, and the standard name is, that we're talking about is air temperature. So we've added those with this bracket notation, uh, temperature.attributes, A-T-T-R-S, blank equals Kelvin. And we scroll down and look at the attributes, and we have units, Kelvin, standard name, air temperature. We could say temp.attrs. Um, uh, date of creation and say um, November 13, 2023. And then uh, it really doesn't like. No, it's the equals sign. Oh, I didn't have an equals, thank you. Um, and then, great, now we have another date of creation. Um, cool. OK. So now we have our, this label data. We haven't done anything with it. But uh, we're at the place where we can start to do computations with it. And uh, this data, th this metadata is going to stick to this X-ray object um, <laughs> until you rip it away. So we can do. We can convert our temperature from cel uh, Kelvin to Celsius just by subtracting. Um, and notice that temperature is not is X-ray. We've subtracted from it a single number. Um, so X-ray automatically broadcasts that single um, float to the in across the entire array. So it says, oh. You wanted to subtract, like it infers what you want to do um, and broadcasts. So now we have exactly the same uh, structure, but we are in Kelvin instead of, or in Celsius instead of Kelvin. Um, OK, so that's the very basics of an X-ray data array. 
but so, so that's temperature. But what if we want to add other things? If we have temperature, if we have a different variable. So let's make pressure. Um, and all right, we're going to do the same thing, but not take as much time. Uh, we're going to make random data of the same size. We are going to wrap it with an X-ray data array, give it some units, standard name. And now we have a pressure. Um, looks very similar, has a different unit, um, different attributes. But it has the same coordinates and dimensions, crucially. So now we're going to make a new data structure. We're going to wrap temperature and pressure in a data set. And because we already have these two data arrays, we uh, can just uh, use this dictionary notation and say data vars equals uh, open uh, bracket um, curly brace temperature equals temp, pressure equals pressure. And we run this. And now we have an X-ray data set that has pressure, temperature, and it has pressure. It has these three indices. And we can examine this and see that what we put in is still there. And crucially, we can get back out what we put in. Um, either through this dot notation, ds.pressure. Um, so we've kind of reached into the data set and taken out a data array. Or um, through a dictionary no syntax, um, ds bracket pressure. And uh, the dictionary syntax is a little bit more robust um, because this dot notation requires that there's no spaces or something. So like, imagine um, you had somebody who had, didn't, hadn't coded a ton and said air space pressure. Um, this would still work. We would have air pressure. But then if you tried to do ds.air space pressure, <laughs> it would break. Um, so. But you could still do the, the, the bracket notation with the quotations. Um, and yeah. OK. So we've got these ways to access data arrays. Um, but uh, if you're doing any sort of data analysis, you'll probably want to take a subset of the data. You won't want to use all the data. Um, all the time, especially if you're working with climate data, where you have terabytes and terabytes of data times. You want a subset. Um, so we are going to do first the sort of like closest to the metal um, subsetting notation. So temperature, um, we remember. Uh, if you want to add another cell, if you're not familiar with these, uh, with Google Colab, you can float your mouse over the top of the cell and press code or text and add. So remember, temperature is three-dimensional. So like, the, the simplest way of doing this is just to say, bracket, we have three indices. We want the first. Uh, we want, I guess, the, the, the second element, because Python is zero indexed, um, from the first dimension. And then we want everything from the second and third dimensions. That's what those colons are saying. And when we do that, so time was, time was on the first dimension. Since we've only selected one element from the first dimension, we now have this indexed selection that is three by four. We still have the coordinate, because remember, uh, we said that X-ray is going to like, hold on, squeeze on to as much information as it can. It's still retaining the coordinate, but it's dropped the dimension. You could keep the coordinate by adding brackets around there 
and then it would have time 1, lat 3, long 4, because you've given it a list with one element. But if you just give it an, in, an integer, uh, it drops down to two dimensions with this coordinate still attached. Um, but that, this requires that you know exactly which elements you want, just like from your head. Um, and you could do this with colons and say, I actually want two elements from the first to the third. Python's weird in that, well, not weird, but it doesn't, if you say first to the third, it doesn't include the third, so it only does the first and the second. Or I guess in this case, the one is, means that it's the, the second and the third. OK. So we're trying to get away from the, the world in which we have to know exactly what index we want. So we're going to use this little bit more powerful dot cell, dot select. So instead of doing these bracket notation, we're going to say temperature dot cell select time equals blank. Um, and that's, this does exactly the same thing as we did before. Um, but uh, it, it enabled us to select exactly the date that we wanted instead of the index. And you could uh, 2018, 01, 0, 03. You could select 2 with a list. Um, it has the same sort of capacity to add lists in. OK, so we've got this name selection. It kept all the metadata. And more helpful. Um, you might want to select the nearest to. You might say, I want temperature in Boston, but you have a very coarse grid. And so you might not actually have a temperature exactly at that location. So you might say, like, choose the nearest. Um, and you wouldn't be the only one in this community who wanted to do that. So there's a method for this. You could say time equals blank, uh, method equals nearest. And you could give a tolerance for how close it needs to be. Um, and so since we don't even have, since our time is only going up to the fifth, but we asked for the seventh, what we get is the fifth. Now if we said, let's do the eighth instead, it'll break because we gave it a, a tolerance of two days, and now we're outside the two-day limit. Uh, if we switch that to three, we're back in, in the game. OK. Um, so our next, but, but maybe you actually do want a very precise location with a coarse grid. So um, for that, you might want to interpolate. Um, and there's a bunch of different methods that X-Ray has for interpolation. X-Ray is under the hood. He's using SciPy, this scientific Python computing library. Um, and so anything that SciPy can do, X-Ray can do. Um, but interp, you can give it exact latitude and longitude, and it will give you, if you're within the bounds of your grid, it'll give you what you want. Great. The next, uh, any questions? No? Uh, you can. Um, uh, that's a keyword argument. It's something like, I'm not going to live code this because I always have to look it up, but it's like um, uh, interp keyword uh, uh, extrapolate equals true. It's something like that. Um, we could look it up. But yes, you can extrapolate. Um, and this would have to be in quotations. I'm not going to run this cell because I'm certain that that's not quite right. But, um, but the answer to your question is yes. Um, and I think you can specify different methods of, of extrapolation. Um, 
Yeah. OK. Uh, but so right now, we have the ability to select based on individual um, elements, named elements, or list. But maybe we, want, maybe we don't actually know exactly what the bounds are. We want to give it approximate bounds. Uh, so for that, X-ray has this slice notation where you give it <laughs> the two uh, strokes, and then it takes whatever it can find in between those two strokes. Um, and it can do that with multiple dimensions. So now here we've sliced a couple of days out some latitude, some longitude, and what we get is within our slice, but not more. Um, and you can have, it, there's an optional step argument for that slice. Um, cool. Um, if you've worked with pandas, you may have used this iloc or loc method dot location. Um, X-ray has that also. So uh, to use that, you can select, you can do the same thing that we did. Um, so this is like, uh, you can't do this because you would be accessing the index, index, but you can do dot loc, uh, which is basically saying find uh, the slice where the value in dot loc equals is equal to the value in the index. Can you do that with twenty five? Um, to, to do a locate on the latitude. So yes. Uh, implicitly, what you're doing here is that. Uh -huh. So if you wanted to do dot latitude, you would have to say 25 on the second dimension. Okay. Yep. But yes, uh, that's a good point. The only reason this worked, if you say just blank, it naively assumes that it's the first dimension. OK. Um, yeah. Uh, say, say it one more time. Because when you're doing the nearest neighbor something. Yeah. yeah. To which value are they like values in the final array closest to? Which is like the initial. So you have this nearest values from the days we provide. Right? Yeah, so you're giving it outer, upper, and lower, and it'll give you whatever is in between those. So it won't give you, like, nearest is not, if you give it, uh, sorry, I think I didn't answer your question quite right. If you give it a single value and say nearest, it will basically linearly uh, measure the distance between whichever two points are nearest and choose the nearer one. Mm -hmm. And th these values are from the amount of dates we give, like we provide in the, in the method. So imagine we're choosing, we have x, y, z of this space. And I, you tell me, I go from 1 to 5. You tell me you want uh, 2.5. And I, I just have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I will, or 2.6. So, uh, what you're asking for is the slice of air that is at 2.6. And if you're saying the nearest, then the closest I can give you is 3. So I will give you the slice of air that is at 3, if that makes sense. Um, so you can, um, you could say, let's scroll back up. Uh, let's remove this tolerance. You could say uh, time equals blank. I think there's support for this. We'll see. Um, la uh, latitude equals 30. Long equals negative 110. 
And there is support for multidimensional nearest neighbor. So then it would be saying, find not just the point in this dimension, but find the closest point to this point, and then it would give you a single point. Yeah. How do you do that to interpolate? Um, interpolate is already doing. But you, so you can just copy that and paste in there, and it's it, you begin the interpolation. Correct. Yep. Um, and because we gave it a number outside of the bounds, and we didn't say extrapolate, it gave us a NAN. But if we're within the bounds, then it will interpolate. Um, yeah, awesome questions. OK. So uh, right, this one other loc, at loc attribute allows us to uh, we can't specify dimension names, but we can um, uh, slice by index values. Um, yep, and this is more similar to uh, NumPy that you might be familiar with. Uh, you can mix and match slice notation and this NumPy indexing notation. Um, but dot loc is not smart enough to recognize that the indexing dimensions are out of order. So you have to know what the, the order of the dimensions are. OK. So that gives us some basic tools to play with data. Um, we needed it to play with that aren't just um, random data. So let's um, fetch this uh, toy data set from the Python, uh, the Pythia um, example data sets and use this standard xr.open data set with a file path. Um, we've, we now have sample data over here that we can use. And uh, we're calling it DS, data set, which is like the standard way that sort of like DF in pandas would be data frame. Um, if, you're, if it's a data array, you might call it, say, DA. Um, all right, so this data set has time, ISO barrack, same. Uh, and x and y. It has four different dimensions, four coordinates, and a bunch of different uh, data variables. Pretty big data set, and a ton of attributes. It's from the US National Weather Service um, North American Re Reanalysis Project. Um, OK, so we've got this data set object. And we can, as we did before, look at individual parts of it. So we can look at the, um, the isobaric, which is uh, one dimension. So we've said, show me this dimension. And the dimension is itself a data array, um, a one-dimensional data array. Um, every dimension has to be one-dimensional. Um, and as we did before, we can say ds.cell select based on a certain, a certain value of this one dimension um, to sl split it up. And everything, all the, uh, since we've taken one, uh, we've taken, we've said, give me the full data set, but only uh, with one value of a certain dimension, everything. Um, gets carried along with, with uh, what we've selected, except we've sliced out by a dimension. OK. Um, as we did before, uh, once we've actually run that cell, um, we still have a data set, 
but we can slice out a single data array. Um, and we can do it either with a dot notation or with the um, bracket notation. But here's something new. Um, we can take the standard deviation. So we've got this wind vector, com uh, u component of isobaric winds, um, winds at a standard equal pressure. And we can take a standard, de standard deviation over multiple dimensions, um, which would be kind of a, a feat in MATLAB. Um, could be done, but <laughs> would take a little bit of wrangling. Here, it's pretty straightforward. You say, I want the standard deviation over two dimensions, and it gives you the, the other dimensions pop out. If we took out those dimensions, we could just get the standard deviation over the entirety of the data set, or we can take it over any dimension. So we can broadcast this operation. And that, that is built into X-Ray. Um, that's built in, but a whole bunch of different um, operations are built in. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, start to add these things together. So we're going to take temperature, um, isobaric temperature, and slice out a certain subset, and then take the mean over a few dimensions, and then we get this profile, a temperature profile. Um, uh, along a certain latitude and longitude. Um, and this is cool. We've looked at a lot of numbers. But one of the first things that one needs to do is, is as you're doing data analysis, is to analyze, uh, look at the data. What is it? Uh, like, do sanity checks. So X-Array, like Pandas, has built in to it a plotting um, utility, which uh, under the hood is matplotlib, the standard Python plotting library. Um, so we have this profile. We can just say dot plot. And uh, because it has two dimensions, time and isobaric, um, X-Array says, OK, you've got time is only one dimensional. So uh, we don't need an axis for that. We have temperature is the values, and isobaric surface is the dimension that we have. So we're going to make a time series plot. Um, and if you got rid of this time, which you could do by dot squeeze, which will remove one dimensional um, dimensions. The dimension is still there. Or the coordinate is still there, but the dimension isn't. Now we run this. Nothing has changed because X-ray still has this coordinate time. Um, you, could, um, you could say drop time 1 if you're really determined to get rid of this. And now you've dropped time 1 as a coordinate. <laughs> Squeeze it out from the dimensions. It's gone. And now we run this, and X-ray no longer has the information that it has this time dimension, so it's no longer the title. Um, so X-ray is trying its hardest to do you a solid and retain as much information as possible. OK. We can play with this plot. Um, and you can do anything in matplotlib with this plot. Um, X-ray has a bunch of stuff built in. You could say y increase equals false. And then now you're going from 
you flipped the y-axis. You could say x increase equals false. X increase equals false. Same deal. You've swapped the x-axis. Um, and you can uh, also, <laughs> let's look at, let's go back to our attempts. We've got three dimensions, three credible dimensions, and a, a, a trivial time dimension. We're selecting isobaric equals 1,000. So we've got two non-trivial dimensions. That's a heat map. So we plot it. And X-ray says, two non-trivial dimensions, that seems like a heat map. And it plots it, it uh, because you have a full XY space. It gives you val values for each point in space. And it gives you a, a color map to represent the values in that, they know those two dimensions. Uh, with the axes names based on what you've called the different, um, actually, based on what the attributes are of uh, the, <laughs> um, of each dimension. Let me make sure I'm saying that right. So let's double check. We've got projection x coordinate. Actually, uh, yeah. Do I know where those are coming from? Projection x coordinate. Um, I think that's coming. That's under the hood. It doesn't. You haven't named the uh, x and y, so it's inferring what they should be. Um, cool. Okay. And this is just built in, but you could change the projection um, with this powerful plotting library, Cartopi. If we have time and you want to um, see things with Cartopi, we can totally look at that. It's its own universe, um, but makes beautiful plots. OK. So uh, let's do a little bit more on working with data. So we're going to fetch a different data set. We're going to open this community Earth system model sea surface temperature data, um, which conveniently we have downloaded. Um, so now we're looking at time, uh, latitude, longitude. Um, I'm not sure what D2 is. And we have uh, C, this will be sea surface temperature. Um, bunch of attributes. Commu um, community model inter um, intercomparison project. Great. OK. So right. Um, so we're going to zoom through this. Uh, we have a TOS variable. Um, Make sure TOS, there's our TOS variable. And uh, TOS is temperature. We're converting it to Kelvin. We can square it. Uh, we can take the mean. We've done this. Um, we can plot it. And one new thing. You can change the size of your plots quite easily. OK. And before we took the standard deviation, we can take the mean, we can take the min. I think we can even take the mode. That might break this. Yeah, I can't do the mode. Um, but I think it can do the median. Yeah, it can do the median. Um, some same deal. OK, there's the medium. Count argmin if you want to get the index. Um, here's where 
we get turbocharged. Uh, one of the most powerful tools in pandas, if you've worked with pandas, is group by. So uh, this is, I think, it's a little bit too big for this screen. Let's um, zoom out a bit. This is the best graphic I have found yet to look at what group by is. Um, because it's not very intuitive, necessarily. But say you have a bunch of inputs. They have different attributes. Um, and the way group by works is you want to split them based on a characteristic and then apply some function to each split group and then combine them back together. Um, and you can do this all sorts of ways with multiple dimensions. And uh, any way you can think to split them, any way you, well, anything you can think to apply, um, you can do the, do the mean, but you can also make your own functions, apply a custom function, and then bring the data back together again. OK, zooming back in. So, OK, so we're going to work now. We're working in temperature space. So we've selected one longitude, latitude, temperature, sea surface temperature. It's varying um, seasonally. This is, a, this is the seasonal cycle, um, or the yearly cycle, annual cycle. So first thing we're going to do is so we're taking this variable and we're going to group by ds.time.dt.month. DT stands for date time. What are we doing here? ds.time.datetime.month is taking time, is taking the data set which has this time dimension. It's saying take the time dimension and because this time dimension is this po powerful pandas CF time, date time, no leap year. Um, it has a whole bunch of attributes, and we can access those with the date time, DT dot month or year. So now we've gotten, we've taken only the month from each of these, um, each of those date time um, um, objects or values of of the, the array. So we're grouping by month. And so now we have this group by object, which is not very helpful in that you can't see what's in it. But it does tell you it has 12 groups. It's labeled, which is one for each month. Already better than pandas. Already better than pandas. Um, and uh, X-ray has some shortcuts. You can just say group by time.month. And so long as the date time index is time.month, it will register this for you. Um, so we've grouped it. We've split it. Now we want to apply. Split, apply, combine. We're going to apply the mean. So we split it by month, and now we're applying the mean. So what we started, what we now have now is, what we started with was 180 time steps. We've grouped it by month and taken the mean over month. So now we have 12 months. What you would call a climatology, which is basically just take the monthly mean um, over a certain number of years. We've preserved latitude and longitude because we didn't, we didn't group by anything related to latitude and longitude. So we've kept those. And we could say dot cell month equals 1. Now we have this. We could say dot plot. And now we have the mean over this period, time period of temperature, temperatures, global temperatures. OK. We could also do that for a single point and say, we've taken the mean at 85 north, 310 longitude. That's like somewhere in, or 50 north. That's like northern China, give or take. Um, it's that part of the world. 
Um, and so we have this seasonal cycle now um, in sea surface temperature. We could also, so we have, we've now defined this temperature climatology. We could take the mean over longitude, and now we have only the latitudinal gradient. Um, so we have month and latitude. And let's transpose. So we had month and latitude. Now we've switched it so it's latitude and month. Just It's like taking the matrix and flipping it. Um, and now we're going to plot. And we could just say plot. And we have this. Uh, map of month on the x-axis and latitude on the y-axis. Or we could say, let's make a contour map with 12 levels and this specific color map, C map equals. Um, if you don't like that color map, you can easily change it. Viridis is the standard um, Python map. Uh, if you don't like that, you could say Viridis underscore R to flip reverse it, the color map, all sorts, all sorts of games you can play. Levels, if you want more levels, so more shades, um, you could say, I want only negative 20, uh, negative 10, 0, hmm. 0, 10, 20. For the, you could specify your levels. So many things you can do on the plotting side. But um, on the computation side, you can see that we can play with these different dimensions. So we can also do um, arithmetic with the dimensions. We can select the, the first month. And what that will give us is a data array that is latitude and longitude. We can subtract January from December and then plot it. And so then we have the difference between January and December um, in temperature space. Um, so. Uh, So um, that's subtracting month from month, but we could also subtract the mean um, to get an, an, an anomaly. Um, so now we've gone back to this original temperature and said group by the month, and then subtract from the group by object the mean And what comes out is the anomaly. Select the anomaly, the, the difference from the mean at a certain point, and you see this. Uh, you've removed out the monthly mean. And what's left is whatever variation on an annual time scale, on an interannual time scale, like over time, how does, how does the data differ from the monthly mean? Cool. Um, and we can just take the naive monthly mean. You're totally welcome to join. Oh, well. Um, so that's the naive monthly mean or the, the, the naive mean in space, uh, in time. So we've just taken the mean over latitude and longitude to give us time on the x-axis, temperature on the y-axis. Um, and this is the mean an anomaly, I should say. But um, we also could use weights. So we, we could take a weighted mean. And one way that we could take the, the weighted mean is to say, well, we know that latitude and longitude are not the same. 
like a grid cell of latitude and longitude is different at the poles than it is at the in the the center in at the equator like because of the way the earth is round <laughs> so we're going to load a new um, data set with the area of a cell so this is um, a data set that is giving us the, the latitude and longitudinal area um, of each cell on Earth. So we could compute this ourselves if you wanted to, but it's easier to just do this for now, to say um, one grid cell at the poles is much smaller in area than at the equator. So equ equatorial grid cells are the biggest. Um, and with that, we can say this temperature anomaly that we had, we can weigh it, weighted by the area, and then take a mean. Um, to break that apart a little bit, let's just look at, we have this temperature anomaly, time, latitude, longitude. We're going to say weighted by the area. And now we have this weighted data array with weights along dimensions, latitude and longitude. And then we're going to take the mean over latitude and longitude to get this weighted mean. And so we can look at the, uh, we could look at the weighted mean. But first, um, we have to define PLT. And I should have put this up top. Sorry about this. Um, from matplotlib import pi plot as PLT. So we have to um, import uh, like the basic PLT from matplotlib. And now we can plot both of these. And how does it know what they're called? Well, we use this PLT.legend to give it a uh, legend. Um, note that we didn't, we just call it said two lines. So X-Array is inferring that we want these on the same plot. We could plt.show um, if we wanted to have them on two different plots. There's plot number one. There's plot number two. So X-Array is going to assume that you want things on the same plot unless you tell it otherwise, which in most cases is helpful. OK, so we've got this capacity to apply different functions over different dimensions and um, take means. Super powerful. We can do a bunch of other things. We can resample. So maybe you don't want. Um, Maybe you don't want monthly. Maybe you actually want uh, yearly. So we can uh, resample time equals annual. Um, I'll have to check what the S stands for. Um, I think it, it, uh, S is specifying something about where, like what day of the month it's annual on. But don't quote me on that. Um, we can, we can check if that's important. Um, so we've now taken annual. We had 15 years. We had um, uh, 12 months times uh, 15 years. Now we have annual resolution, and we've taken the mean of that annual resolution. Um, we can also take a rolling mean. We can say um, ts.rolling, a five time step rolling mean. And we want the, the mean to be on the center of that five time step to get uh, a, a rolling mean. This is one of those instances where uh, this is a similar thing to split, apply, combine. We've applied this function, and we get a rolling Data, data array rolling object, we then have to take a mean or do something to it in order to get back 
a data array that we can work with. Um, we can take the average at a certain latitude and longitude um, and then look at the difference between the five-month moving average and the monthly data. Moving average um, is smoothed out and has lower amplitude, which makes sense. OK. Um, masking data, you talked about, can we have essentially not the same um, index? Um, to some extent, we can do that with NANDs. We can, so we're going back to our beginning. We can say, um, we want our temperature data, but only where time equals negative 1. Um, so in other words, time equals is the last time step. Um, and I cell is choosing based on index. Cell is choosing based on value of index. I cell is choosing based on locate place of index. So this is quite similar to saying um, negative 1. It's the same thing. <coughs> I cell or bracket notation, same. Um, cool. Um, but let's look at dot where. So we have this sample that we've chosen. We chose the last time step. Now we want to say, and let's look at this. We have a temperature plot. We want to say, we want the sample, but only where the sample is greater than 0. So mask out anything that is less than 0 with this Boolean condition less than 0. Or uh, sorry, mask out anything greater than 0. So we want things that are less than 0. Um, and what we get is it's only at the poles where we have temperature less than 0. Cool. Um, and <coughs> just to compare, oh, this is where I imported it. Um, right. We've removed most of the world's data. Um, here, because we wanted them side by side, we had to do go a bit deeper into matplotlib to say plt.subplots. We want two columns of data, and this is the fig size. Um, it doesn't have to be this. You could say n rows. And it would flip them for you. It just would look a little bit janky. <laughs> OK. Um, where dot where is quite powerful because you can do this with multiple Boolean statements. Um, so you can say, give us only where the sample is between 25 and 30. So you've bracketed it by its, where it's greater than 25, less than 30. And um, that gets you only lower latitudes. And this is bringing us to like, the science. Uh, ideally, one gets to science. Um, because maybe what we want is actually a box. Um, the <coughs> El Nino, if you've ever heard of El Nino, um, it's calculated like whether we are in El Nino or not. This climate pattern is calculated um, by temperature patterns in the um, equatorial Pacific based on uh, like the ratio between like Nino 4, this one area, and Nino 3, this other area. Um, and Nino 3.4 is like, has become the industry standard for, for El Nino. So we're going to say, we want our sample, but only where the sample, the latitude is, great, is less than 5 and greater than negative 5 and the same boxing with longitude, and make the box of a certain size. OK, we've got temperature in one place. Um, and up until now, we've, when we've been masking, we've been saying x-ray's default is do 
if you say dot where and nothing else, then it just fills the rest of the space with nans, not a number. But, if you, but you can also say, actually fill x array with zeros where uh, the conditions that you're giving it are false. So now we have zeros everywhere except where we've said, do the thing. All right. Um, and we're now going to import CartoPy um, with this coordinate reference system because we'll need it in a second. All right. So we want to compute this El Nino index, which is um, defined as this five year running mean, um, five month running mean, um, where El Nino and La Nina events are defined with this uh, 3.4 index if it exceeds or exceeds plus or minus um, four tenths of a degree for more than six months. Um, and that, like, we have all the tools to do this now. What that's going to look like is we will have this running mean temperature for the region that we've boxed out, and we're going to give it a threshold um, based on the index that we are, we're going to calculate. OK. So we've got our CESM data. Let's make sure that it's loaded. We've got the area that we loaded. We're going to merge these data sets. This is a new command, dot merge. Um, so we've, because they had the same coordinates, we can just slam them together. Um, and we're going to do a, uh, a bit of CartoPy wizardry. So we've created PL uh, a figure, plt.figure. We're adding axes to it with a certain projection. There are many different projections, like how, how do we project a three-dimensional sphere into two dimensions. The one that you may have grown up with is Mercator that was made by a dude in the 1700s and has a lot of distortions and high latitudes. Robinson is better, but no projection is perfect. Um, we've added coastlines to it, grid lines. And uh, in order to get X-ray to talk to this projection, we have to um, flag that the data are in latitude and longitude, which, for whatever reason, um, is the coordinate reference um, system called Plat Carré. It's got to be French. Um, but you have to tell, you have to specify what transform your data are in. Um, we've given it a divergent color bar, a cool warm. Um, so there's their temperature. And we're, so we're going to select the region that we selected before. Um, with this sl slicing notation that we used. And we're going to mask out only the areas where uh, we want data. We're using this drop equals true now. So we're, we've not just masked out the, the areas, but deleted them. Um, so we have a smaller data set. Now we're going to build a cool plot with the same code that we ran used before to look at what this box is that we've selected. Um, and now we're going to jump into the science. We're going to group by this box, group by time for this box, subtract out the monthly mean, uh, weigh the monthly mean by the um, surface area, and take the mean over latitude and longitude to get the Nino 3.4 index. What does that look like? It looks like it has one dimension, and it's time. So we've got time and some index. We'll see what that looks like for real in a second. Um, we're then going to take the rolling mean of that time. We're at monthly resolution. So we're taking the rolling mean over five time steps with the center equals true. There's our rolling mean. That's reduced us now to uh, 
a data set with NANDs at the beginning because it's a five box time step. So, uh, and you, we said center is true. So the first, apply a five box filter to a time series and the first two time steps, there's not enough uh, in the box to fill it. The last two are blank also. We could say left or right. Um, uh, live coding here. Um, let's look at, uh, it doesn't like. If you just open the parentheses, it'll. Yeah, it doesn't like that. There it is. Um, Just at the tippity top. It's got a bunch of, well, it's, key, it's keywords. Um, yeah, we could look up. Uh, we could look up how to do left and right. It's possible. Um, equals false. I think center equals false would default it to um, the right. So now we have four nands at the beginning um, and no nands at the end. OK. And now we can plot it. And we have this sea surface temperature anomaly, five month rolling mean. Time is going on left to right, temperature anomaly on the y-axis, and but it's a deviation from the norm, so we need to divide it by the standard deviation. We get the standard deviation by taking the standard deviation of the data set. And now we're going to divide what we had before by the standard deviation in order to, drum roll, get Nino 3.4 index. How did we do it? <laughs> um, we, we did plt.fillbetween. So fill between takes an x axis um, vector, which we got from our um, data set. And then we plotted for the y, we said um, this Boolean. The normalized index where the normalized index is greater than or equal to 0.4. And so that's red. And then we said where it's less than or equal to negative 0.4, uh, between that and negative 0.4, plot blue. So that gave us this blue and red bounded. And then we plotted in black the mean AX H line is AX horizontal line. So it's just horizontal line. Um, line width, we could say 10, and then we'd, be, we'd blow it out of the water. Um, oh my gosh, it's enormous. Um, and we also have this uh, line style dotted. A little bit hard to see those dots. Um, we could change this to dashed. Um, there's all sorts of fun things we could do. Now it's dashed. But that's the end of our tutorial. Um, I've yammered on for the vast majority of this time. Any questions? What do you think? A lot. <laughs> but it's a few steps that kind of nice. The when, when did you stop using X array in this last example? Because you've only been just working with the single, with the single, var the single variable. This yeah, so what is still X-Array. Okay. It is still a data array. 
Um, and the only place we stopped working with it was when we did plt.fillbetween. Well, but then you're just... Then we're just, just plotting. Plot. So it has been x-ray x -ray all the way through. Okay. Um, I mean, you could dot values. You could just go bare metal. There's the NumPy array. Um, and NumPy, like the more overhead you add onto things, the slower it is. So NumPy, doing computations with NumPy will be marginally faster than with X-Ray. Um, but X-Ray, didn't talk about this at all, but X-Ray has under the hood a, a whole set of lazy computation um, wrapped up in this um, library called Dask. So you can do computation with petabytes of data in the cloud uh, in a way that you could not do it with NumPy because you wouldn't have to load it all into memory. Um, so X-Ray is kind of like the gateway drug into the whole universe of um, big data in Python. So, and, and also, if you went to the metal, you'd still not be able to leverage things like the rolling mean um, and those, those little things that you were using there. Agreed. Yeah. You would not. You'd have to be doing applying NumPy functions to everything and then like checking what dimensions you, you're working with. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if in, in the past you haven't gotten this far. You've just gotten to making the maps, I think. And I think that yeah. this, this, this really this is a, a good, good, uh, good tutorial to show all the way through to the chart. Well, I mean, so I went into this saying, OK, we did this last year. Like, what is X-Ray in 2023? Um, and like a good mature library, a lot of it is similar. It just has like, they just keep adding capabilities. So there's like a year ago, not everything you could do in, uh, you couldn't apply all the functions. Like dot weighted actually a year ago didn't exist. Um, so it's like, it's like things that make it easier. Um, fleshing out the, the thing. It's got like 900 con contributors, it's a huge, like really well supported. Yeah, bringing in that latitude and longitude matrix to, to weight by the area is very clever. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the goal of this is not to suddenly be X-ray wizards, but it is to now know that X-ray is out there. And as you work with Python, say, oh, I have three dimensions, I don't want to work with pandas panels. Like, I should be using x-ray. And then you have an entry point to go learn how to do it. I mean, it's even, like this is the where function. I don't know if, if, you've, if you've shown that before. Um, but what that really starts, so between that and then when you were doing like the three slices yeah. it really stuck because i'm just like well this is just filtering and yeah it's just filtering except you can't do this on pandas because you can't have three dimensions <laughs> so and the awareness so it starts feeling a little bit like uh, like a relational database yeah and that's great yeah yep cool so we have one more of these coming up in two weeks Julia, um, still a thing. Um, so come back if you like. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.